It's 5.30, so we're going to begin this uh, police and fire committee meeting. Uh, before we get started with Chief Barber, I just wanted to address the Facebook rumor that was out over the weekend to cause all the drama. There are no plans, there have been no talks, there is no intention of eliminating the fire department. We value our professional fire department. We're happy with the work that they do, and we want to continue that. So uh, if I've taken away anybody, anybody's thunder, I apologize, but uh, I just wanted to address that. There, there's been... I don't know why we want to go backwards instead of forward, but somebody decided to get on Facebook and start some controversy where there wasn't any. So I just wanted to address that once and for all. So that's it. That's all I've got. In fact, the reason why I called the meetings, I want to pay them more. I like that too. Talk to me. Um, before we do our staffing ordinance, we have the first of the year. I want to get in there a bonus for our first timers. Um, so we already currently have, last year we put a bonus in there. Was it last year, Chief, or the year before we put a bonus in there to incentivize the part-timers, the three that worked the most hours? I think it was last year. Was it last I, think year? It, I think it was last year. Last year, so we, so we don't pay our part-timers very much money and because uh, it's hard to, right? It, I mean, it just, so we try to incentivize. Last year, we broke the contract and paid them uh, significantly more than the contract stated. We went to 1050 because the contract said to pay them 962, which was insulting with the weight inflation went last year. Uh, when we wrote the contract, it made sense, but inflation last year was 9%, I believe. Um, so we raised it to 1050. Um, I'm actually used to this. Shoot, I'm going to need, need to talk about this too. I propose that we uh, not follow the contract again. The contract we last year we did two percent on top of the ten fifty. Um, I don't know what top that is on top off the top of my head, but I propose we pay them eleven dollars an hour and take that to finance uh, instead of the two percent on the ten fifty. Let me do that real quick. I think two percent would be like twenty three cents or something like that. Yeah, ten point seven one. So ten point seven one we should go to eleven, okay. but. Um, we need to I, <laughs> uh, go to that, but then also on top of that, to the part timer that works the most hours every month, a hundred dollar bonus. It's twelve hundred dollars a year. I think that's uh, extremely insignificant um, as far as um, impact to the budget and incentive and uh, an incentive for our part timers. And then in addition to that, we already offer 500, uh, three $500 bonuses to um, the part timers, three part timers who work the most hours by November 1st. So when it comes to November, so we just issued three, five, we just issued $1,500. So three $500 checks to three part timers who work the most between January 1st and November 1st. Um, if you don't have any issues with that, I would like to take that to finance and, um, uh, I don't really, I'm not interested in adjusting the, um, I mean, if the union wants to, we can take it to the union, but I personally think it would just be easier to adjust the staffing ordinance, see how it goes for a year, just give it to them. And then, because uh, we negotiate the union contract in January anyways, and then if it works great, then we can put it in their union contract that we negotiate uh, in January. If they want to put it in there and do a new OU for it could be, yeah, 12 could months, be, then so what? That's right. Fine. It could be as simple as just an MOU. It would be easy for council. But um, I would propose $11 instead of 1071 and then a $100 bonus for every whoever works the most hours. Uh, that's not pay period. That's actually uh, you know the most hours within that. What's the proper terminology on the calendar month? <laughs> calendar month, yeah. So it's going to be manually counting for us to go back there and then be paid behind. But uh, that's not a problem. I've talked to TSAP about it. Not a big deal. Yeah. How do how do the part timers get scheduled? Is it like a round robin thing, or that like a Yeah. So we use the scheduling app. Okay. Um, so the, the full timers have fixed fixed schedules, and the part timers, uh, the way that that's designed, we have a, a group of part timers that <clears throat> once shifts come open. <clears throat> that goes through each part time are based on seniority and they pick their shifts because <clears throat> as we know you know the part timers are making 10 15 hours right which is less than somebody looking at mcdonald's or burger king so what we do is we try to give them some type of incentive to have to have some type of buy-in so they, they're allowed to pick their shifts so they pick their shifts i monitor the app, app that's on everybody's phones 
and they can actually pick their shifts in advance. Usually we have shifts covered up to three months in advance. So we have a, a cache of 13 part-timers, positions for 13 part-timers right now. And they will pick their shifts based on availability with their fire and EMS jobs. So that's the reason why we have such a, a larger cache of part-timers, even though not every part-timer is going to be working the shift. They, they pick their shifts based on availability. That works out pretty well. It works out a lot better for them. Good. Because they have to bounce from part-time job to part-time job. I have some members that have had up to six different fire and EMS jobs. And they are actually literally going from one shift to another until something full-time opens up. Uh, there's including myself. There's three. We have one full-time position that's open right now. We have a fire that's on the uh, administrative leave till January 30th. Mm -hmm. Or he gets a job. Do you have any questions, Mr. Smith? Uh, no, I'm <laughs> very supportive. I, my only question is why the specific numbers of a hundred. Um, dollar bonus like it was there any particular methodology of, of arriving at that one or is it just like what there's uh, just an easy number yeah this okay. was something that scott uh, actually brought to me um it was his, it was his yeah uh idea that he brought to me so Great. To do that. yeah well i'm supportive of paying firefighters more i'd be interested in doing even more than that honestly but i'm fine with 100 if that's the starting place i was yeah. just trying to yeah. come up with a number that would be um because increasing the uh increasing the 50 cent i was trying to do manageable in the budget without sure. uh, asking for more appropriation in the beginning um seeing how multitude reasons i didn't want to change the appropriation from, so i was trying to do no impact to the appropriation and then also seeing what the response was to it so great um you know of course we can just fire halfway through yep. you know i mean i I would love to pay everybody more. I understand. You know, um, I just am trying to do anything I can to incentivize the part time folks now. You know, they're the only part time, well, yeah, other than Susan, they're the only part time folks that we have. So, um, which that's a different, uh, I know that's a different committee meeting for her, and which we want to talk about her as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a great start. I, are you, would you have a mechanism to track and, and evaluate whether or not it is um, effective for filling shifts if it's like an adequate incentive to actually meet the need? Um, yeah, we, we keep track of the mm -hmm. shift that everybody works. Um, yeah, in the audit office, we keep track of all the time sheets as well. So it would be easy to see if the shift covers from other individuals, was, you know, if that percentage was picked up. Great. You know, before, you know, after this process started. Cool. We maybe to further expand on that, it was we had three the top three. I'm sorry, the top. So looking back at this past year, or the who just won, not one, but who worked the most hours, the top worker was easily identifiable. The two were within 100 hours of each other, and the one that was right below those two was actually really close as well. So. Uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, so the top four, well, the top one was way uh, extrapolated out, but the next three down were actually pretty darn close, you know. Mm -hmm. So hopefully generating that, uh, hopefully that little bit of incentive, you know, will help maybe bring up another one, you know, and uh, build that center core a little bit more. Right. What, what I'm hopeful for, you know, and give our folks, you know, take a little bit better care of our folks. I have a question uh, for Chief Barber. Do, do you know or do we have a way to find out what a comparable firefighter pay scale would be for a department your size with your capabilities? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> everything in the state of Ohio is uh, actually law through high municipal league. I am not sure if the rates are updated from 17 or not. The last I knew, it was 17 rates in that system. Um, but that would be a good start. That documents all the municipalities and all the positions. So there's more current, um, there's more current years in there, but it depends if the city's participated or not on the OML. So I'm not sure. Um, to further your question, so it depends on 
When it comes to the OML, it depends on if the city participated or not and actually put their information in there. So there's more current years, but I don't know if there's more current years with the department than 17. Depends on what department we're looking for, you know, that would match it. Right. I know uh, just if you're looking, Taylor has more current. Uh, he had 21, I believe, uh, cities or 20 cities um, if you need it. Yeah, but, but that's available. Well, well the only reason I ask is because uh, me personally, I would like to see Nelsonville compensate its firefighters equitably with like type of departments with like and similar capabilities. At, at a minimum, as a space type. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You guys aren't attacking this at all. You have to know the facts in order to attack. You know? That is true. And God bless you for trying to get the facts. Thank you. Um, and the other reason I'm here is my daughter, I moved to Nelsonville because I think it's a really great place to live. And my daughter's house would have burned to the ground if it weren't for the quick action that they took. She lived at uh, 357 West Washington with a fire in the second floor. And there was just a hole in the floor. But it could have gone up really fast, and because that there is staff available, and not everybody, you know, just call in whenever you can find them, it saved that. And I'm sure that's not the only situation like that. The fire is something that it happens, and it happens fast. And thank you for the job you do. That's why we're here. It's obvious. You ready for comment? Go right ahead. Um, my name is Glenda Tingle. I live at 73 Franklin Street. And there was no drama over the weekend. I posted a question on Facebook. And apparently it set off a number of people who had the same question as I did. First of all, there was another video floating around from last June in which, for example, Mr. Frank mentioned the fact that we could go to a full volunteer fire department like Chauncey, which has what, less than a thousand people, a bit smaller. Perhaps they can handle all volunteer, we can't. But that particular video and the question brought to the forefront a good number of people who had the same question I did. Glad to know right off, we're not going to get rid of our paid fire department. That would be a tremendous mistake, quite evidently. Agreed. The second question is, in light of the recent increases in salary, why wasn't Chief Barber given one? That's a question that uh, we base based on evaluations and city managers. Uh, not so the right. city auditor, the city manager, and the police chief all had evaluations, mm -hmm. but Chief Barber did not. Is, is that correct? Is that correct, Mr. Frank? So the auditor hasn't got a pay raise. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. It's, the auditor's position does know. He's one of the lowest paid administrators in the city. Actually, I think he is the lowest paid. However, the police chief just got a raise for $75,000. Isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah. You want to compare uh, credentials? I beg your pardon? You want to compare his credentials? With whom? The fire chief. chief Barber, mm -hmm. absolutely. Do you have a master's degree, Chief? No. How much experience does Chief Barber have compared to how much experience the new acting police chief has? We're, <laughs> are we talking about the acting police chief that's been in place for a week? Well, he's the only one we have, so you put him in. So, yeah, at the moment. We will adjust his Isn't he pulling the salary? We will adjust his pay as soon as we figure that out. Trust okay. me. That, I promise you. We just didn't adjust the pay. That is a temporary situation. So, are you want, do you want to compare? Are you wanting to argue about the guy that's in place right now or the guy that just left with 30 years of experience and a master's degree? What I want to know, I'm concerned with that fire that question, chief. Please? Can you just compare? Do you, uh, you want to clarify? Why did he leave? He got a sheriff's job. Oh, okay. So he got a better job. Well, it actually, it was a pay cut, but it's a better, more prestigious job. He took a pay cut for a better job. Yes. 
that's illogical, but okay. If that's the way it went, that's the way it went. Sure. Meanwhile, let's go back to where we are. We have an experienced professional fire chief who brings in monies to train personnel to buy equipment so that we have an up-to-date, well-trained, capable firefighting staff and yet that doesn't count in terms of whether he should receive a pay raise i don't think it's appropriate that i talk about his performance here on youtube but if you want when to, will it be appropriate <laughs> i'm telling you i don't think it's a good idea um okay why because it's not going to be good it's going to be pretty embarrassing for me or for Chief Barber? So you're saying you would like to see Chief Barber leave? I did not say that. You're putting words in my mouth. I'm asking. I never said I wanted Chief Barber to leave. Then who gives him his evaluation? Do you? You just asked about his performance. Are you, you saying his question? performance is inadequate? I said his performance is lacking. Oh, all right. So you have recent evaluations which address that issue? I have recent write-ups in his folder. Those are available as an open records, is that correct? No, absolutely oh. not. Oh, so... They're available to him. Is it then your opinion only? Yes. Okay. So your opinion only determine whether his performance is lacking. That's what the charter says. It says I'm the CEO. Yes, that's what the charter says. Um, the charter also says that the mayor does stuff, but we don't have one of those anymore. Um, if you're the only one who gives the evaluation, and you're the only one who makes the decision. What recourse is there to make sure we don't lose him as chief of the fire department? I don't know. Because it's apparent that you would like to see him gone. I never said that. I didn't say you did. You're making up stuff and you're putting words in my mouth. Okay, you just said his performance is lacking. You in did not areas. No, no, no. I said it in a few areas. No, you know what? Did Here's he not thing. say it was lacking? Did you, I? Glenda. Did Glenda, I miss here? Glenda, just because. People, Glenda with a G. Glenda, just because. Thank you. You know what? Just because people make mistakes doesn't mean they don't recover. It doesn't mean that you can't do better. Glenda, have you. Listen, what? I've done a job for many years, and you know what? I got corrected, and I I fixed it and moved on. Uh-huh. Um, do you, could you tell me, for example, how much money Chief Barber has brought in through grants during his tenure as fire chief? You mean how much did he hire other people to bring in? Because he hired other people to bring in. That wasn't my question. My question was He hired another company to bring in my fifty thousand dollars since I've been my here. My question He hired I said another company in his tenure as fire chief. Well my time not here, just since you've been here. Well, that, I'm only grading since I've been here. Mm. That's all that matters. In my time here since I've been here, Glenda, because that's all that's responsible is during my time here. And he hired a company to bring in fifty thousand dollars. He didn't do it. Oh, okay. So this company you know how much just I brought decided. In? Linda, you know how much I brought in? Fifty-four million. Can a rose on your nose? Isn't that That's your right, job? Glenda. That's right, Glenda. Isn't that your job? Sure is. Okay. Is he not leading his men and women firefighters in learning and maintaining their abilities to to function as firefighters? Is he doing that? Well, Glenda, I don't know, is he? I'm asking you. You're the one that gave him the evaluation. You should know this. Is well, he? 
Not very good. So, can you be a little more specific no, other can't. than not very good? No, I can't. There's a reason why there's one on administrative leave right now. So, you're telling us, or me, rather, because I'm the drama queen here. I didn't say that. You did. No, he did earlier. I didn't hear um, you're putting words in our mouth, Glenn. Of course so I am. You put words in mine over the weekend, so sure why shouldn't didn't. I put words in yours? Would you like to see the text? I still have it. I didn't put words in your mouth, Glenda. <laughs> okay, fine. Bottom line is, what it sounds like to me as a concerned citizen of this lovely little town, that you have a an agenda. No agenda. Where it concerns the fire department. Perhaps you're not the only one on the council with said agenda. But that's the way it comes across, not just to me, but to others as well. I'm just the one who's willing to come in here and put myself out to say these things. All I know is what I've observed in my tenure here, my time in Nelsonville, and that is I have seen the fire fighters training. I have seen them out on runs. I've seen them hanging snowflakes on the square. Um, I've seen them do a variety of things and do them well. Have you seen Not them? the least of which is fighting fire. Have you seen them working on personal vehicles inside the uh, fire station? Let me see. I'm not allowed inside the fire station no, 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 because no, I'm a civilian. Have you seen him working on other people's personal vehicles inside have the you? fire? Yes, I have. Okay. And have you seen them working on putting car parts on people's personal vehicles inside the fire station? Does that affect their ability to fight fires? Are you okay with city workers installing car parts on personal vehicles? I've seen city on workers duties? do a lot of things. I asked you, are you okay with it? Does it affect their ability to fight fires? Does, are you okay with it? As long as it doesn't affect their ability to fight so fires. You, okay. Are you okay with them allowing um, firefighters to use city equipment for personal gain? What, are they taking the fire trucks out for joy rides? It's a simple question. It's a simple response. I asked you, are you okay with Chief Barber allowing firefighters to take city equipment out for personal gain? If we're going to have to be more specific, you're going to have to be more specific. You're talking in general. No, it, it's, a, it's a specific thing. Are you okay with Chief Barber allowing firefighters to take city property for personal gain? Are we talking about a fire truck? Are we talking, I'm talking about, about a, fire equipment? A fire equipment. Gain? Is it a hose? Is it a, an axe? Is it a hat? Does it matter? Yes. Why does it matter? It's equipment. It matters. Why does it matter? It's personal equipment. Why not? City equipment. What? I mean, might as well allow the uh, city utility workers to take a bobcat. Have you ever taken a pen home from work? Might as well allow them to take a bobcat home and install septic. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I have a question. Yes, sir. Do we discuss personnel in this matter? We probably should. Go ahead and end this uh, line of questions. I think we've had enough. So. <laughs> of course, you have. Can I just ask one question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you said that he he did hire somebody to get the fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Um, I'm making an assumption he hired somebody because he maybe wasn't sure how to do it. So he hired somebody. Mm -hmm. Did it did it pay off for the city to do that? Absolutely. It, it was worth it. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, yeah. and I'm perfectly, can I, can I address that? Yeah, sure. Absolutely, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Let's just call it what it is. If we're going to hire a company to do that, I perfectly respect that all day long. Let's just say, hey, you know what? We hired a company. Let's not say, hey, let's not take credit for something we didn't do. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> let's hire companies to go out and get us money. I'm definitely okay with that. You know what? For example, the engineer that we got the money with, right? Did I do everything? No, it's a group effort. In fact, some of that money that I mentioned, the 54 million, Chief Barber helped with some of that. He wrote letters saying that they've supplied water to the school uh, to help so they could flush toilets. So for a couple, we just got a $5.2 million uh, grant for that we're getting ready to do water lines next year. Um, before we turned it on, 
for Fort Street, right? Um, so part of that was he wrote a letter. So he was one part of that, uh, one piece of that uh, puzzle. The school wrote a letter talking about not having uh, water. Um, if I recall, both of them even did a uh, resolution saying how much they didn't have water. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, if it's a group effort, it's a group effort. Let's not to go out and just try and sell off something that we didn't do. That's all I'm saying. Yes, absolutely. It definitely benefited. I'm for paying companies to go out. If we spend five, two, I think it was two grand or three grand. I don't remember what it was. I don't care. Just say it for what it is. Don't go out there and say, oh, I pulled in all this money. No, we paid somebody to go out there and pull this money. Don't pay credit for something we didn't do. I mean, that's all I'm he, saying. He delegated it out. I mean, Hired it out. Yes. it out, delegated it. I mean, I, I, I don't find that as a, as a big distraction. I feel I should clarify a lot with her tonight, but I think it'll be controversial if I do clarify it. A lot of the grants that I've brought into the fire department, a lot of those grants I have written myself, I have written FEMA grants on my own. Um, the last couple of FEMA grants, I pay a grant writer's fee. What they do is they bless the narratives for our grants because they have the inside track of exactly what kind of what, what equipment's going to be the hot items for that year through the FEMA grants. Um, all the other grants, all the other grants I write myself. The a couple of FEMA grants I did myself and the other ones, a couple of other ones I didn't. And I have not seen an evaluation and I've never seen any write-ups. That, that was actually that surprised me when you said that. I told you that you had a verb hole that I was putting it forward. Yeah, you, you, we talked about some verbal stuff, yes. So that's not a surprise. Much different from right that's why. That's why. That, that's why. So I okay, so are you, so are we clear now? He put a note in his file. Okay. Okay. So there's no, so there's no unclear. <clears throat> gotcha. Do you have a formal evaluation process that you go through? We actually have an H. We're paying an HR company to come in and build one for the entire city because the entire city doesn't have one. That's a really good idea. Yes, <laughs> yes, we don't have one for the, anybody. So um, this great company. We, we actually just had an inter, uh, meeting with them last Friday. They're coming in to build. Um, they're going to interview everybody because we don't have anything. And full disclosure, our personnel records are not in order. Our um, our I9 process meets the bare minimum requirements. If you know are familiar with what that is, that's the uh, the records over here. So we meet the bare minimum requirements for the state auditors, but they're going to get us some best practice. They're going to come in and uh, what else are they doing for us? I, I talked to you. Over the yeah, program. you did. Yeah, you just I gave you. Anyways, we're, they're going to come in and they're yeah. going to redo our employee handbook, yes. employee manuals. So they're going. I guess what I'm trying to say is they're going to come give us the full catalog. That way we're fully compliant because none of us have any evaluations. Anybody. Uh, no Our department has evaluation forms. I gave it to Jason to look, but I don't know if he's using that or not. Oh, good. Well, I'd love to see Tommy Mitchell's evaluation tomorrow. I'd have to do one on him, yeah. So. Okay. Very good. Yes, sir. I had a question. Um, the proposed raises are they part of the 23 budget as it stands now or the uh well the two percent is all automatic in there not the the 11 percent the 11 dollars is the uh there are two percents in there not the 11. okay so that still stays within our budget though. yes okay okay mm -hmm. i think we should send it on the finance then yeah so and that's interesting because none of drinks are in his file What's that? Right. Thanks. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I adopted this from the marshal's office and then tailored it down to our station. Okay. Um, what else do you have? No, that was it. Yeah. I have a question for you uh, regarding fireworks. I was looking through the numbers, so we didn't spend, if I correct me if I'm wrong, we didn't spend. Oh, yeah, we didn't spend that. We didn't spend our allocation of the fireworks money. How did we, did we take up collections? How does that work? Oh, we didn't get a check on the city, did we? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it was. A, we paid for it out of the donations that we got in. Um, that's a good question. Okay. But uh, we do donation letters every year for the fireworks. Okay. Else. You're saying you're saying the city didn't cash a check? Or right. Check for that. We, yeah, we, did, we didn't spend our allocation for that through the budget. Um, we were going through it. It didn't look like you pulled it out of the... 
when we're talking. I about might not have said, I might not have given the city an invoice for that. Through Hamburg. Yeah. I can verify that tomorrow with Hamburg as well. It kind of brings me to a couple other questions as well. The, the donations, where do they go when they come in for fireworks? Is there an account for the city or how's that? Yeah, the, uh, we run all the uh, all the stuff, the PR stuff through the volunteer okay. side of the fire department. Okay. Um, because we can't spend money out of the city's budget that for like the community and stuff like that because it's not allocated for those things. Okay. So that's why we have still have the fire the, the fire department's accounts and the fire department's treasurer because we run all of our PR events, all of our uh, public education, all of stuff that we do uh, through the volunteer side. Okay. And what kind of oversight do we have? Uh, we have a treasurer. The taxes are done by uh, Bishop's Tax Service. Okay. And I believe that periodically Taylor even has a. And, that, and that's my fear. And when I say fear, I guess, I, not that I'm accusing you, <laughs> but you know how bad controls can lead to. Mm -hmm. our, books are, our books are open to, to Taylor as well. He's actually looked at it. And it just it makes me wonder maybe that's something. There was another situation that came up this week too about uh, contracting with fireworks. Do you contract with the fireworks company to do the work? Yeah, so okay. Hamburg. Yeah, so Hamburg shoots the show. We provide the safety for the show. Okay, and that's some of the fire department members are actually Hamburg uh, fireworks reports. And that's something I'd like you and Scott to kind of flesh out because there was another situation that came up this week yes. about uh, contracting agents for the city. And actually, by the charter, only Scott's supposed to be. So I just want to make. I'm just looking to make sure that we're okay. running things the right way. So I just it was a concern of mine. I wanted to bring it to your guys' attention. So. I can fill in tomorrow on the contract stuff. It hasn't uh, nothing to do with uh, this committee. I'll fill you in tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're straight. I'm sure we can get it figured out. Sounds good. Uh, Chief, you have anything else? No, that's it. I'm a little more comfortable tonight with everything that's been it going was, on. Uh, it was definitely a different meeting than I expected. So, but we all made it through, and we're all still standing. So, I, I, I do know that. Uh, there are a lot of people in the community that have been calling me and, and approaching me in town when I'm out doing inspections and things. You know, I have looked at some opportunities and it's really gotten a lot of people's attention. And I think that's pushing the rumor mill here in our small community. And there's a lot of people that are upset thinking that I might leave the city of Nelsonville. But I have looked at some opportunities and that's that's where I am right now. I, I, I haven't made any decisions. Well, thanks for letting us know. Appreciate that. So, may I make one comment before you close? You're a troublemaker now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> pastor Peter, please. <laughs> Just because of the pastor for my name. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for, first of all, I walked late to the meeting. Um, and I, um, I don't know all the ins and outs of what you all discussed, but um, I just want to give my two cents to say that. Uh, I believe in the chief. I, uh, I've worked with him over the years um, and uh, like what he does. And so if there's any way to continue to work together and, and make it happen, um, I certainly would commend that and hope that that could be the case. Um, you know, like, I mean, we stand together, we fall together, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I believe we can make it happen together and, and I certainly hope that you decide to stay. Um, so that's all I have to say. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Smith, do you have anything else, sir? Nope. Mr. Frank? Okay. We will go ahead and adjourn our meeting then at 6.04. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>